know y'all heard about this. I kind of talked about it a little bit. Um, I kind of talked about it a little bit on the Anton Daniels channel. But young teenage dude, woman going into church, they knocking heads over. Young teenage dude stalking y'all grandmothers on their way to church and they knocking heads over. Check it out. Year old in custody for that vicious attack on a 68 year old woman. Yeah, the woman was headed to church in Queens Sunday morning when a suspect punched her and sent her down the stairs. Fox 5's Antoine Lewis has been following this story this week and he is live for us in Briarwood, Queens with the very latest. Antoine. Chris and Bianca, last night, uh, shortly after the arrest, the NYPD Deputy Commissioner for Operations, Cass Darkey, sent out a tweet. I'd like to read it to you. It says, in part, this violent criminal is where he belongs, in handcuffs. And to be perfectly honest with you out here and across the city, nobody's going to disagree. The NYPD arrested the 16-year-old repeat offender last night around 9 and quickly threw him in jail. He was wanted for a despicable attack on 68-year-old Irene Talium Boris. The mother and grandmother was on her way to church services last Sunday when the suspect runs up from behind her as she gets to the top of the steps and with no regard strikes her, causing her to fall down and backwards to the sidewalk. And as Talium Boris is lying there with critical injuries, surveillance video shows him stealing her purse, which contained her wallet, credit cards, and $300 dollars cash. Police say that he also stole her car keys and her vehicle. Detectives add that the suspect has had multiple felony arrests, mostly involving robberies of women. And again, as you come back to us live, we went inside and spoke with some of the people at the church. They declined to go on camera, but they did say they've been in touch with Miss Irene's family and that she is still recovering. She is still in critical condition, but stable. As far as the suspect, police arrested him again, 16 years old. He is right now facing robbery, assault, grand larceny, and criminal possession of stolen property. We're about to go over to the county courthouse now to find out what more information we can get you from there. And we'll have a complete report coming up today at 5 o'clock. I don't care what color you are. I don't care if you're a man or a woman or anything like that. Number one, keep your hands to yourself. Number two, these children is out of control. They're not even kids. These is monsters. They're out of control. Number three, we used to have standards or we used to have, no matter who you were, no matter how bad of a person that you were in the community, there was always a line that you just didn't cross, right? You never hit the old people. Even if the old person was a crackhead on the, on the street, like, you never did. Like, he was just a crackhead. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just let him go. He, whatever. That's crackhead Ronnie over there. You never hit old people. You never, ever attacked the church. You just didn't do certain things. It was certain things. Like, violence stopped on Sunday. It even stopped on Sunday in the wire. But it was just certain things that you just didn't do. But I guess all of that is out the window. There is no code. There is no lines you can't cross. There is no code. There is no requirements. There is nothing anymore. You can do whatever you want to do when you want to do it. It's madness out here. Y'all better be careful. Also, on top of that, two, two police officers. We're going to deep dive into the police today. A little bit later in the show, two police officers um, was killed near Syracuse, Syracuse, New York. Check it out. Now to breaking news in upstate New York. Two law enforcement officers have been shot and killed after a traffic stop gone wrong in Syracuse. The suspect was also fatally shot. CBS News' Christina Fan joins us live from the newsroom with the latest on this tragic case. Christina. Mary and Chris, the Syracuse police chief, called the fallen officer and sheriff's deputy heroes after they were fatally shot in an exchange of gunfire with the suspect, who was also killed. Authorities say the incident started off as an attempted traffic stop. Two Syracuse police officers were trying to pull over a suspicious vehicle around 7 p.m. Sunday, but the driver took off. Officers tracked the car by license plate to a home on Darien Drive in Liverpool and asked for backup from the Onondaga County Sheriff's Office after learning the suspect might be armed. Officers found the car at the home and saw what appeared to be guns inside. They heard what, what sounded like uh, someone manipulating a firearm from inside the residence. Moments later, there was an exchange of gunfire between at least one suspect and the officers and the deputies. As a result of the exchange of gunfire, one SPD officer and one Onondaga County Sheriff's deputy were struck by gunfire as well as a suspect. 
The police chief says the Syracuse police officer who died had about three years on the job. The sheriff called his fallen deputy a seasoned law enforcement officer who was very well liked in his community. Authorities say the scene is still active this morning as they wait to search the suspect's house. In the newsroom, Christina Fan, CBS 2 News. Police officers really get no visibility in society. And if you look at most of the news cases or most of the protests and the things that happen, uh, police officers get no visibility. I mean, look, you could be a chick on a Mississippi boat and people are going to have a whole conversation about whether or not the Mississippi brawl and what. Every single day, on average, a police officer is harmed. I'm going to highlight, because I have so much respect for the people that actually protect us and serve us and, you know, is grinding every day and, you know, the divorce rates and, and the possibility of them even getting married or being able to hold their family together based off of the lifestyle that they have to live and the people that they have to serve and they have to put, they basically, they put in their job before their own family. They don't really have a life. Most of them don't even get to retire. Most of them don't get to retire with their families intact. That's how difficult the job is. We have a lot of respect for the military. We got a lot of respect for firefighters. But police officers, they get no love. So I'm definitely going to highlight that and rest in peace to their family. Uh, you know, it's, it's a very difficult situation to listen to. But it's a lot of police shootings happening every single day. No, cops get no respect. Cops get no respect. That's cap. But let's continue. And then last but not least, um, a suspect was killed in a shootout. Uh, but here's the thing. It's not that we're not used to seeing this. This is a normal thing, a normal occurrence. The other part of it is this, is that not only was the, was the suspect killed in a shootout, but why was the suspect free in the first place? Check it out. Meanwhile, many are wondering how a violent offender can get out without bun and commit a heinous act. 18-year-old Jalen Blobley, one of the suspects, died in the shootout with police. And you know, it was not his first run-in with police. Our April Thompson joins us now after learning more about Jalen Blobley. April, what do you know? Greg, when 18-year-old Jalen Lobley got into a gun battle with police this morning, it was on the heels of being released without bond from jail at 201 Poplar. But for the crimes he was in for, many are asking, why was he out in the first place? 18-year-old Jalen Lobley was no stranger to Memphis police. We found court documents related to his arrest just last month, an affidavit connecting him to two car thefts on March 2nd and 3rd. March 5th, police were called to a Whitehaven home on Richland, listed as Lobley's address for a suspicious vehicle. They say they found Lobley asleep in the driver's seat. They say he had a Glock 19 9mm handgun, which had a Glock switch attached that turned it into an automatic machine gun, which police chief C.J. Davis mentioned Friday morning after Lobley's deadly encounter with police. He was also charged at that time for two stolen vehicles and having a programming device commonly used to steal cars. Lobley was jailed, but the next day, a judicial commissioner gave him a $10,000 bond. At a bail hearing, another commissioner released him on his own recognizance with only a curfew from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Shelby County District Attorney Steve Mulroy's office said, our office strongly argued against lowering the bond, citing the defendant's danger to the community. Despite our arguments, the commissioner approved the ROR bond, highlighting a problem people have been complaining about in the courts. Criminals getting out and committing more crimes. We went to Lobley's home, as many ask. Why was an 18-year-old out at 2 a.m.? especially now that we know he had been put on a curfew. When we reached his mother by phone, she told us, do you think I really want to talk to you when my son was just killed? But many in the community just wonder, when will it stop? Children involved crime in the city is really getting out of hand. It's ridiculous. Um, but there has to, more has to be done. It has to be done. Parents have to be held accountable for their children. Thank you, man. Listen, this is the first woman that I've actually seen on an interview for something happening to where she actually told the truth. She says parents need to be held accountable for their children. Let me give her a round of applause. 
Parents need to be held accountable for their children. No, she didn't blame it on the mayor. No, she didn't blame it on the federal government. No, she didn't blame it on the system. No, she didn't blame it on uh, the community centers, the recreation centers, the taxes. She didn't blame it on nobody. She said, listen, at the end of the day, when you get done talking, and you keep saying mama's baby, papa's maybe, and all of this. Parents need to be held accountable for their, it's that simple. It ain't a black thing. It ain't a white thing. Parents, I am responsible for my daughter. I am responsible for my daughter. It is the reason I only had one. I was very, very careful. And that I wanted to make sure that I was going to pour everything that I could in order to ensure that she had an opportunity to be great. There's no reason why she should need student loans in order to go to school. Not with me being born here in the United States of America. Not with my parents being born here in the United States of America. Not when my great-grandparents being born here in the United States of America. There's no reason why my daughter should be on the streets. There's no reason why she be out there on her own. There's no reason why my daughter should need student loans to go to school. There's no reason why I shouldn't be able to level up and make it. Because I've lived my whole life for the last 16 years that she's been alive to ensuring that she comes first. I can't blame anything except for myself, whether she's successful, I'm gonna take the, take the blame for that, or she fails. It's my responsibility. I own it. She didn't ask to be here. Blaming everybody but the but who y'all supposed to be blaming? The person in the mirror. 